uh, have a need of large amounts of green hydrogen and uh, ammonia, which uh, are needed uh, according to European regulations by the European industry. And I really believe that um, this import can uh, uh, be also from uh, Canada. Um, another one is um, high investment costs uh, to build the infrastructure. So, um, yeah, but, but uh, this challenge is expected to decrease, uh, the cost uh, is expected to decrease when the technology becomes more mature. Uh, however, currently in Europe and also in Canada, these uh, investments are uh, supported by grants and subsidies. Um, another challenge, very important, is that um, um, currently the cost of molecule of hydrogen and uh, its derivatives like uh, ammonia, for example, are much higher in comparison to uh, production of hydrogen uh, from the fossil fuels. So it's still to be developed uh, that um, the cost uh, to decrease in line with uh, capex, uh, lower capex investments and the lower cost of electricity. And finally, um, the last challenge is uh, that uh, some legal regulations are still under development. These are technical regulations for building installations, uh, operate them safely, uh, but also uh, trade regulations to certify the hydrogen and uh, enable it to, to, to free trade uh, across, um, across countries. Um, however, the unification of laws and the support of trade agreements uh, is uh, undergoing uh, between EU and Canada. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that, that, that these challenges could be uh, passed and uh, we will talk soon about opportunities. So uh, as I said uh, previously, it is expected that, that there will be a lot of demand uh, in Europe for um, renewable hydrogen and renewable ammonia and especially ammonia is expected to uh, be really competitive in supply from Canada uh, to Europe. Um, also, um, as you know, uh, following the Russian invasion of Ukraine in 2022, energy security has become a really key element of uh, current EU's uh, policies and plans. And uh, there is now a need to ensure also that the energy supplies to Europe are diversified and Canada, as a country which has a political stability, it is on the, on the forefront uh, to do the exports to Europe. I may also mention that some of uh, Canadian projects already have been pre-certified uh, using um, European certification scheme for evaluating the green hydrogen. Uh, this is also a, a big plus for, for cooperation together. And um, finally, this is the geographic uh, location of Canada, uh, especially uh, with projects which are located on the east coast of Canada. They, uh, the, the, the installations and exports from, from seaports in east coast uh, can offer a short journey to northern Europe, where the most of demand in Europe exists, like large industry, uh, fertilizer industry, refineries, and, uh, and steel factories. Um, also in Canada, in, in East Canada, there, is, there are strong wind conditions and hydropower available. So, um, and many existing seaports are also located there. So, yeah, I, I believe that, that these are key opportunities to, to export ammonia and, and other derivatives, maybe also methanol and, and uh, sustainable and aviation fuel to Europe. Let's say that the European strategy uh, requests uh, for uh, the amount of 20 million tons of renewable hydrogen to be used by European industries by 2030. And uh, half of this uh, amount of renewable hydrogen uh, is expected to be imported from, uh, from other countries and uh, other regions, including Canada, of course. Uh, to make it happen, uh, um, there is a need to create uh, export and import infrastructure. So thinking about Canada, uh, it's important that, that Canada can uh, 
secure um, enough renewable energy sources, especially onshore wind on the East Coast, then uh, hydrogen production and storage facilities, and as you mentioned, also uh, storage in, in uh, salt domes, and um, prepare a deep water seaport to, to have uh, the installations ready to, to uh, export hydrogen and, and ammonia. So uh, finally, this could create uh, the infrastructure which we call in Europe hydrogen hubs and uh, transport corridors, which can easily transport uh, hydrogen and its derivatives to, to Europe. Um, what I can say, the time is now. So uh, Europe has a great demand on uh, on renewable uh, fuels, um, and uh, yeah, I, I think that, that Canada should focus on, on reducing the timeline of the development process of um, uh, of uh, installations, because um, if not Canada, then then others may may create this this opportunities. Um, I can also say, um, representing Rockfin, which is uh, um, a company which builds uh, machinery and uh, exports uh, technology, that um, I, I would like to encourage uh, the investors to, to, and, and the government to use foreign uh, direct investments, especially from the EU, EU uh, from the companies from the EU, which have uh, great experience in uh, building installations, modernize. Uh, port facilities and build uh, renewable energy sources and especially build um, electrolyzers. So first of all, Canada is um, a key global economy. Uh, Canada is part of uh, G7 and is uh, taking, taking a lead uh, during 2025. EU and Canada already have a number of uh, very important initiatives underway that bring them closer economically and make it easier to do business, uh, especially the CETA agreement, which is a um, comprehensive economic and trade agreement between the European Union and Canada. And uh, finally, the geopolitical situation of recent months makes the EU and Canada much closer for deepening cooperation between these two countries and two regions.